In this lecture video, we will talk about context models and how they are represented using UML. In the early stages of the specification of a system, you should definitely decide on the system boundaries. This may involve working with the system stakeholders. Stakeholders are all people who are involved with building the system and using the system and specifying the system. And you have to work with these stakeholders to decide what functionality should be included in the system you're trying to build and what is provided by the system's environment. Systems environment may include other automated systems which will provide input to the system which you're going to build. You may also decide on automated support for some business processes and whereas other processes may have a ma maybe manual or supported by different systems. So let's uh, take a look at why context models are important. The outcomes of developing context models are threefold. First, it limits the system cost because you're going to specify what is the functionality solely provided by your system. And you're also going to specify what functionality can be taken from other systems, what functionality can be automated, and so on. You should also decide on overlap in functionality where you can decide what functionality is going to be reused and what functionality should be newly implemented. So since you have all this in place when you decide on the context models, it is definitely going to limit the system cost and the system development time. It is also going to give you an improved understanding of system requirements and design. In some cases, the boundary between the system and its environment is relatively clear. For example, if you're developing an automated system to replace an existing manual or computerized system, then the environment of this newly developed automated system is usually the same as the existing manual or computerized system. In other cases, the boundary between the system and its environment may be blurred or may be flexible. For example, let us consider you're developing the specification for the patient information system for mental health care. This system is intended to manage information about the patients attending mental health clinics and the treatments that have been prescribed to these patients. Now, in developing specification for this system, you may have to decide whether the system you're going to develop should focus exclusively on collecting information about consultations only. That means all the other systems, there might be other systems to collect personal information because the system you're developing is focusing exclusively on consultation information only. That means personal information collection may be done by another system in your system's environment. Or you have to decide whether collecting personal information as well as consultation is being done by the system you're going to develop. So this is how you define the role of your system and what is the role of other systems in the environment of the system you are going to develop. So let's take a look at how the patient information system looks like. So this, uh, the diagram here shows you the context diagram or the context of the mental health care patient management system. So if you clearly look at this diagram, you have your system which is going to be developed here at the center of the diagram. It is called as MHC PMS. In this diagram, uh, you are also going to specify what other systems are there in the environment of the system. So you have a patient record system, you have an admission system, you have a prescription system, you have an appointment system, you have statistic system, and you have a management reporting system, which indicates that this, go this system is only going to do the consultation and work that is directly uh, related to the consultation and treatment of the mental health uh, patients. Whereas you have other systems in the environment which are assisting the system by performing very specific tasks. So this is the role of the context diagram. It sets context. It tells what is the role of the system being developed and what are the other systems in the environment uh, your system is going to interact with. 
However, context models normally show that the environment show the environment which includes several other automated system. In this case, you can see there is patient record system, admission systems, and other systems listed, which are automated systems interacting with MHC PMS and providing valuable information or performing some tasks which help MHC PMS. However, the diagram will not show the type of relationship between the system, that is MHC PMS, and the system in its environment. So you can see there is only a link between the system, but the exact type of relationship, uh, the kind of interaction will not be specified in a context diagram. You have to use other diagrams to get those details. So if from this diagram, you cannot see whether all these other uh, helping systems are co-located, whether they are located in the same building, whether they are located in different buildings, different environments, and so on. So simple context models are used along with other models, such as business process models. Uh, these will describe more uh, human and automated processes in which particular software systems are used. Let's take an example of uh, another uh, system here or another diagram here i should say so this diagram shows the process model of involuntary detention so this is a model of an important system process that shows the processes in which the mhc pms is used sometimes patients who are suffering from mental health problems may be a danger to the others or to themselves they may therefore have to be detained against their will in a hospital so that treatment can be administered. Such detention is subject to strict legal safeguards. For example, the decision to detain a patient must be regularly reviewed so that people are not held indefinitely without good reasons. One of the functions of MHC PMS is to ensure that such safeguards are implemented. So in this figure, you can see the figure, this figure which is depicted on the slide is called as an activity diagram. Now, activity diagrams are intended to show the activities that make up a system process and the flow of control from one activity to another. The start of a process is usually indicated by a filled circle here as shown here the end of the process is usually indicated by a filled circle inside another circle rectangles with rounded corners so you can see multiple rectangles here with rounded corners right so these rectangles with rounded corners or oval shaped uh, entities in this diagram are usually used uh, to represent activities that is specific sub processes or activities that must be carried out. In the UML diagram, arrows, you can see arrows here, they represent the flow of control from one activity to another. A solid bar, so you can see one solid bar here, you can see many other solid bars. So this is used to indicate activity coordination. When the flow from more than one activity leads to a solid bar, that means all of these activities must be complete before progress is made to the next activity. For example, if I have a solid bar here, right? There are two activities which flow into the solid bar. That is inform patients of rights and record detention decision. When I have a solid bar and incoming arrows, that means that both these activities should be completed before the control goes out of the solid bar. If one is completed, then it waits for the other activity also to complete before it goes ahead with the control and process flow. When the flow from a solid bar leads to a number of activities, that means that these activities are executed in parallel. Let us consider this solid bar. You can see there are multiple outgoing arrows. That means both these activities, the outgoing activities should be held in parallel or can be executed in parallel. So the activities to inform social care and patients next of kin to update the det detention registration also can be uh, parallel. So you can see the solid bar here and all that means outgoing, all three outgoing arrows point to three different activities that have to be completed or that can be executed in parallel. But when we talk about incoming arrows to the solid bar, that means each of these have to be completed before the control goes to the uh, next activity and so on. 
so arrows also may be annotated with something called as guards so you can see these arrows here they have labels or something called as guards so these indicate the condition when that flow is taken so you can see guards showing the flow of patients who are dangerous and not dangerous so here you can see this is one guard dangerous these are not dangerous so this is nothing but a condition based on these guards you can take different flows so patients who are dangerous to society must be de detained in a very secure facility however uh, patients who are suicidal and so are a danger to themselves may be detained in an appropriate ward, ward in the hospital so let's quickly review this diagram start state confirm the decision detention decision once the decision is com confirmed this is an activity it goes to a solid bar uh, which has two outgoing activities that means these two activities can be executed in parallel that is inform the patient itself of his or her rights and record the detention uh, decision so both of these can happen in parallel but before both of them control uh, complete because you can see the outgoing arrows are also going into a solid bar that means these two activities must be complete before the control flow goes here so you can see a diamond shape here that means a decision has to be taken so there are two outcomes of the decision the patient is dangerous the patient is not dangerous these are called as guards so if the patient is termed as dangerous you the next activity is find a secure place if he is not dangerous the next activity is admit to hospital so if you find if this is the flow you have taken based on this guard value if this guard value or this condition evaluated to the patient being dangerous find a secure place now again you can see based on whether the secure place is available or not available you have two different uh, activities that is if it's not available transfer to police station if it is available transfer to that secure place or secure hospital and uh, if the patient is not dangerous admit to hospital so you can see one two three all these three activities have to complete before you go to the next set of activities that is indicated by the solid bar so all incoming arrows should be complete only then you can go to this uh, the other end of the solid bar which indicates that once this is done one of these decisions is taken you can inform social care inform next of kin and update register these three are outgoing activities from the solid bar that means these three activities can be executed in parallel again you can see these three activities are incoming to a solid bar that means unless you complete these three activities you cannot go to the end state so in this case you have seen what is the start state you have seen what is the end state you have seen how our activities represented you have understood what is the importance of solid bar incoming arrows to the solid bar indicate completion should be there before you move ahead outgoing arrows from the solid bar indicate that all the outgoing activities can be held or conducted in parallel so you can see some rectangles here not rounded rectangles but rectangles these are other systems which are interacting with your activity so admit to hospital hospital may require an admission system uh, you know interacting with this activity and update register may require mhc pms system interacting with this activity and even record detention may require the same so uh, in this lecture video we have seen what is a context model and why it is necessary we have seen the uml representation of a context model we have also seen the uml representation of a activity diagram in uml